joy. All of you that's visiting from out of town, it's good having you. We, we honor you and we welcome you. Thank you for coming and worship with us. You're going to be blessed today. Amen. I say Joel and his wife, eh? Larry L., that's right. And I say Joel, who? And Car amen, my, my favorite cousin, Kara, amen, and Eden, amen. God bless you all. If I forget you, count it against my head, not my heart. I love you, amen. They got all these bright, I don't, amen. But it's good seeing all of you here. If you mind, just stretch your hands toward me. Why don't you do this? Why don't you stand to your feet and let's go before the Lord. Let's release our faith because I believe that today as we release our faith, God's going to impart a word to you today. I believe God wants to speak to our hearts. Stretch your hands. And as you stretch your hands, you're praying because God uses these frail human beings to, to, to minister his word. I pray that everyone here today, that God has a word for you today. Let's go before the Lord. Father, we are so grateful for this day. We thank you, Lord, for, Lord, as we come to the end of another year, we thank you for being a faithful God. We thank you that, Lord God, you're God who keeps his promises. God, we thank you that, Lord God, that you've kept us, you provided for us, you protected us, you healed us, Lord God, you sustained us, Lord God. God, we thank you for forgiving us, Lord God. We don't want to forget none of your benefits. And so, Lord, we bless you. We thank you for being a good, good God. You're a good, good Father. And Lord, we want to just say thank you. We love you. We honor you. We adore you. We praise you. And we've come for one purpose, and that is to worship you. Now, Lord, I pray that this morning, as we have lifted our voices and worship you, may you now minister to your people. Anoint me as I open up the word of God. I pray that, Lord, that you will craft the word to minister to the hearts of your people. You know, every need, you know, whatever they're going through. And, God, today, give them a word in season, Lord God. Heal, deliver, change lives today. Do what only you can do, Lord God. We promise to lift you up. We choose to decrease so that you might increase. And may you get all the glory. Change lives today. And all God's people who agree with that say, Amen. Now, come on, give the Lord one more praise offering. Amen. 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 Just, just as you're, just two quick things. Uh, we've already dedicated that the year 2019, we call it a year of empowerment. And uh, the Bible says in Ephesians 3.16, he says, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources that you will be empowered you will, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. How many know God wants to empower you to do all he's called you to do? Amen. And the word empowerment means to, is the process of becoming stronger and more confident, especially in controlling one's life and claiming one's right. How many know that you have rights as a part of the kingdom of God, as a citizen of God's kingdom? And God wants to empower every one of you to fulfill the purpose of and the destiny he has for your life. And so this coming year will be a year that we're going to focus a lot on how can we empower each of you to fulfill the purpose that God has for you. Second thing I want to just announce is that every year we start out the year with a, uh, a time of prayer and fasting. And next Sunday we will be starting what we normally start, uh, have is 21 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, we will be fasting from uh, January 6th through J January 27th. And uh, fasting is defined as abstaining from food in some significant way in order to grow spiritually. You know, isn't it amazing that we sometimes think fasted 21 days? Well, think of it. The, 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 the Muslims, they celebrate Ramadan where they fast for 40 days from sunup to sundown. And some of you won't miss a meal for Jesus. Say the devil is alive. And so I want to challenge you that, you know, that you will commit because whatever you commit to, the Bible says commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will cause your plans to succeed. I want to tell you God will sustain you if you will say, God, I want to commit to a season of seeking you, of drawing close to you. And so what we do is we start the new year with a time of seeking the Lord. We want to draw close to the Lord because we believe that uh, how we start the year often determines how a year will go. I believe when you give God your first and your best, he will bless the rest. Can I 
have an amen. And so we purpose to give God the first part of our year. We're going to give that time to seeking him, to, to, to tuning out the world, to draw closer to him. And so uh, I'm inviting all of you uh, because prayer and fasting is the secret to spiritual power. How many of you remember that, 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 that was a young man that the disciples tried to cast the devil out? And they say, Lord, we could not. And they asked him, why? And Jesus said, uh, this kind. Say this kind. This kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. There's some victories that will only be won when we determine to seek the Lord in prayer and fasting. And so I want to challenge you to join us. Fasting is the private discipline that brings public reward. What you do in secret, God says, I'll reward you openly. And we also believe that fasting should not just involve uh, food, but sometimes today we can, the average, is said today, the average American spend four to five hours on social media, media television, the, the, the internet, Facebook, Twitter, internet. What are we asking you to do is that even during that time when you would normally be engaging everyone on social media, take that time to engage Jesus. Take that time, instead of putting your, instead of being in the face, in, uh, fo focus on Facebook, put your face in the book, amen, in the word of God, and, 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 and let's determine that we're going to focus on seeking the Lord. I'm going to let you know now, I won't be fasting per se, from Facebook, because I'm going to be having a, a daily time of prayer every morning. You could join me, 6 a.m. We have a lot of people that follow us through social media, and one way I will be joining them in praying and fasting. I won't spend a lot of time, but every morning at 6 a.m., I'm going to do a, a time of prayer, and you can join me if you'd like, and, uh, but, but as a whole, we'll be fasting from social media. We'll be fasting from some of the things we enjoy, like golfing. Somebody says, too cold to golf anyway, amen. <laughs> Fantasy sports, amen. But anyway, I just want to challenge you. Listen to me. I believe that God honors the sacrifice. How many of you believe that? And I believe that, listen, if it don't mean nothing to you, it won't mean nothing to God. But I believe if you'll give God a sacrifice, the fire falls on the sacrifice. And I purpose to give God a time and to dedicate a time to seeking him and drawing close to him. During those times, we will, we will normally be engaged in entertainment we're going to purpose to seek God and hear his voice. God wants to speak to you. And the Bible says the secrets of the Lord re is revealed to them that seek him. To those who search for him, God has secrets. How I many you know we don't know what's going to happen in 2019? Does anybody know what's going to happen in 2019? But God knows. He already knows. And how I many you know God can prepare you and position you for every situation that will come in your life. And one of the things that has happened throughout our ministry is that in our times of prayer and fasting that God has positioned us for whatever is coming in our lives. Many of you know I stood up here in 2016 and I said I don't know what's happening but I just sense that, that something, uh, a crisis is going to happen. I, the only way I could describe it is that before Hurricane Katrina we called a 21 day prayer and fasting. We didn't know what would happen but God positioned us in her, uh before the storm happened, so that we was in a position to be a blessing to hundreds, not just hundreds, thousands of people from the New Orleans area. I believe had we not prayed and fasted, we would have not been in position for what God wanted to do. In 2016, I didn't know that a tornado would hit us causing $2 million worth of damage, but we had already decreed that God, this would be a year that God would turn things around. Let me just tell you, when we, because we prayed and fasted, when a tornado hit, immediately God said, listen, this is going to work for your good. And in that, as a result, God used a tornado to enable us to pay off $1.8 million of debt. Now, I'm decreeing that this year, listen, we, we, we bought this property, this 11 acres and 120,000 square feet for $3.2 million. We owe, less, we owe only $500,000. How many believe God can pay it off in 2019? I got some. I say, how do you believe God can pay it off in 2019? Y'all help us pay it off. We're going to take y'all all on a cruise. <laughs> According to your faith. But you don't help us. You'll be staying left behind. No, 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 I'm just uh, scratch that. That's all right. This morning, as we start the new year, I want to minister on the subject, charting 
your course for 2019. One of the most amazing things in life is that God has given you and I the ability to imagine, to dream, to, to set our course. It, it's, it's amazing to me because let me just tell you, you and I have been given the privilege to determine how a year will go. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 9, listen, a man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directed his steps. The message Bible says we plan the way we want to live, but only God can make us able to live it. Listen to me. The word devise means to think, to imagine, to purpose, to forecast. It means to conceive, to invent. One of the most misunderstood principles in the Word of God is, is, is not realizing that God gives you and I the ability to plan, to purpose, to forecast, to often determine what kind of future we will have. You listen, God has a purpose, but how many know you got a part to play? He's given you and I an imagination so that we can create, we can invent and conceive things. I believe that God wants to do amazing things in 2019, but I mean, you know, it won't happen without you. They sung the song intentional. Say intentional. In other words, you got to be intentional about what God wants to do. And I want you to, it's not just going to happen. You got a part to play. There's a, every, God gives every one of us 168 hours in a week. The difference between people who make their lives count and those who don't is those who be intentional about, about planning their course or setting goals. And so I want to talk to you this morning about how to chart your course by setting goals. Say goals. God wants to do some things. Listen to me. You, you won't have a great walk with God by accident. You won't have a great marriage by accident. You won't be debt free by accident. How many of you got to put some feet, some faith feet to your faith? You got to set some goals. I want you to know that, listen to me, it will, it will cost you something, but I want you to know that, listen, if you will set your course, if you will learn how to set some goals in every area of your life, God will bless you because faith, when we set goals, it causes us to stretch our faith. We're going to be learning over the next seven weeks, and this is what I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you not to miss one week. We're going to be talking about how to set goals in seven specific areas. How to set spiritual goals, physical goals, emotional, mental, financial, vocational, and relational goals. How many of you want to grow in every area of your life? That's what God desires you and I to grow in every area of your life. The Bible says be steadfast, immovable, Always abounding, growing in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. So this morning, I want to talk to you about the importance of setting goals. This has blessed my life more than any other thing in the last 40 years of my life. When I learned the importance of setting clear goals. You know, it's amazing what God has done in my life. It's amazing what I, I stopped sometimes. I was showing somebody the facility. You know, we can take it for granted, but all, everything came about because somebody dared to dream. How many of you got a dream? The rest of you, we're going to pray that you get a dream. <laughs> the first thing that I want to say about goals is that goals enable me to have clear direction for my life. Many of you know the scripture, Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. I like the way it says it in the Message Bible. Listen, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are more blessed. I want to tell you what goals do, goals enable me to have a clear direction for my life. I want to say it again, if you don't aim, if you don't aim at nothing, you, I promise you, you're going to hit it every time. Goals give me a target to read. Listen to me, 
I had a goal. I was reading last night. I completed. I had a goal to read through the whole Bible again. It was wonderful last night as I read the last chapter of Revelation and read the last read the book of Malachi and I completed the whole Bible. Isn't it wonderful when you complete a goal? I, you know, there, there's certain things that we attempt to do, but I want you to know they won't just happen. Some people they they go through the year and they just they just drift. I say it this way: you'll either be a drifting, uh, a, a wandering uh, generality, or you'll be a meaningful specific. You got to have a clear, defined goal in life. The Bible says it this way in Ephesians 5, verse 15. Listen to what it says. Be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. Tell somebody, say, don't live like a fool. But like those who are wise. What do wise people do? Wise people, making the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly. But understand what the Lord wants you to do. If you and I are going to fulfill our purpose, then you're going to have to take time to sit down and say, God, what do you want to accomplish in my life in 2019? What do you want to do in this ministry? What do you want? Everything you see is because we sat down, because when we saw the beginning of the year, saying, God, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to do? Listen to me. As we pray and seek the Lord, God gives us clarity. He gives us direction. He gives us vision. And I want you to know, how many know God has a vision for your life? The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, listen, this is the plan I have for you. How many know God has a a good plan for you. Now I want to ask you, what, do you know what that plan is? See, but this is the next part of the verse. Everybody read that and like to claim that verse. I know the plans that I have for you, say the Lord. Plans of good and not of evil. Plans to prosper you, to give you a good future. But how many you know this is what the next verse says? You will seek me. Say seek him. And you will find me when you seek and search with all your heart, and I will be found of you, saith the Lord. How I many know treasure is never found on the surface? Is all how I many you got to dig for hidden treasure? And it's the same way in life. God has some treasure for you. God has some good things He wants to do. God wants to reveal some things. But how I many know there's a part that you and I got to play? And what goals does goals enable us to have direction for our lives? I like the I like what it says here. It says, "Listen, be careful how you live." You got to understand that you got this one and only life. Listen to me. I've been in more funerals this year probably than I've ever been in all the years prior. I was in four funerals just this week. Two former, one member, one former member, their mother's bad. But one was one of the guys I played Little League Baseball with. Here, here's what his, his fiance told me. Say, I said, listen, I just saw him two months ago. He and I talked in the credit union. Well, what happened? She said, he wasn't sick. She said, he said, he, he got all, he came home one day riding his motorbike. He came, he went inside, he said, I, I'm not feeling well. He, she brought him to urgent care. He thought he was, it was just a nasal con, uh, congestion or something like that. Guess what happened? They did a blood work. He had leukemia. A month later, he was dead. I know this, the older I get, life is short. I don't want to waste my life. I, want to, I don't want to live foolishly. So this is what he said. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but live like those who are wise. I want you to know, if you knew that you only had a short time, what would you do with your life? I want you to, you would make, you would, you would make the most of every opportunity you got. And so I want to tell you, goals enable you to, to not just drift through life, but in, enable you to have clarity, purpose, and direction for your life. Goals enable me to, make, me to make the most of every opportunity. Goals enable me to live purposefully. Goals enable me to accomplish God's will for my life. Paul writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. He said, do you not know in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? He said, therefore run in such a way as to win. Say run to win. You don't, you're, not, you're not just in this life just to drift through life. Some people, you know, it's been said there's three types of people. That those who make things happen. 
There's those who watch things happen, those who wonder what happened. People who have goals make things happen. How do you want to make things happen in 2019? Well, I want to tell you, then if you're going to do it, you're going to have to have focus. You're going to have to have purpose. You're going to have to have a goal in mind. He said, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Listen, everyone who competes in the games go into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. How many of you, know, how many of you can remember who won the, F- the Super Bowl 10 years ago? You're lying. He raised and he don't know what he's talking about. Listen to me. The reality is you can't even remember. Who was the quarterback five years ago? Who the, you, most of us can't remember. Because listen, they work all this energy. They put all this energy. They have this goal. I want to get the Super Bowl. They do it for something that's not going to last. But y'all, we're laboring for something that's going to last for eternity. I want you to know when you, when you got godly goals and you're laboring for Jesus, it's going to last you into eternity. Paul say they do it for a crown that will not last. But listen, he said, but we're, listen to me, I like this. They, he said, but they do it for a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Do y'all hear that? God will not forget one time when you feed the hungry, clothe the naked, when you make a difference in your life, when you find a way to help people, empower people, I want you to know it's going to have an eternal difference. God said it's going to last forever. Therefore, listen to what he said, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. Aimlessly meaning you don't have no direction. I do not fight like a man beating the air. You'll never win a fight just punching the, at the air. He said, no, listen, he said, I beat my body, I make it my slave, so after I preach to others, I might not be disqualified. Paul is saying that I do not run aimlessly like someone who don't have a goal in life. I'm pressing towards a goal. Karina read it this morning. He said, listen, he said, brothers, I'm not saying I, I reached it. But he said, this one thing I do, I forget what's behind Sometimes we set goals and we say, man, man, this 2018 was a rough year. Don't, let, don't live in yesterday. You got to do what Paul said. Forget what's behind, but press towards what's ahead. Come on. He said, I, twist, I press towards the goal of the mark of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. You got to have a goal in life. It's, listen, if, if you don't have a goal, you'll live sloppy. It takes hard work and strict training to reach your goals, but it's worth it. It brings eternal reward. You have to determine where you want to go in life. I want to, how many of you want a better relationship, better relationship? Some of you, we're going to pray for you if you don't. Do you believe the one causing all the problems? How many of you want better finances? How many of you want to have a greater, a fuller, exciting, growing relationship with the Lord? How many of you want to make a difference for God? Eternal difference. Listen, well, listen to it. It will not happen by accident. You got to be intentional. And goals, goals give you direction. Goals, I'm going to give you some examples. You know, but, but it's amazing. You know, I, I, every year we set giving goals. We, my wife and I get together and we say, well, listen, what, how, how, many, how much do we believe in God to give away in 2018? It's amazing. Now, listen to me. I, I shared with the men. I didn't fully reach it, but I gave more than I, than I, than I ever could have. I gave more than I expected. I, 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 I had a goal here, but I mean, you know, if you don't have nothing to shoot at, you won't, you, you're bound not to hit it. Amen. You're bound not to, you know, you got to have a goal. You got to have a purpose. I, I, I want to have a better. I want to have a better marriage. So you know what? I set goals. One of my goals is that every, I try to set a goal every week to take my wife out on a date. Sometimes our date is to go to the big drive through the big city and go up to the fast food, get some food, and come home and make a little mat in my room and sit down and. See, see, I, I'm just trying. It don't have to cost a thousand dollars. It don't, you know, you see, you could make it exciting. And so sometimes it is simple. It don't have to be so costly. But you got to have a goal. You don't stay 35 years married and stay happily married 
by accident. Can I have an amen? You don't stay faithful to one woman all the days of your life by accident. Can I have an amen? And so if you want to have a better relationship, you got to set goals. You got to invest in because it's not going to happen by accident. How many of you want to be debt free? Those of you that don't want it, just say, just look at the person and say, I'll take your oath. Come on, tell, tell, I'll take your oath. See, sir. Secondly, goals, I like this part. Goals causes me to stretch my faith. Do this, everybody. Do, do, just, say, cause I, I want, just stand up one second. Just stand up one second. Come on. I'm going to get you out of your little comfort zone. Yeah, come on. Stand up on, and, 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 and just get some run and just, just kind of stretch. Come on, stretch. Say, God, stretch my faith. Come on. Come on. Say, God, stretch. Come on. Say, God, stretch me. Come on. Say, God, stretch me in 2019. Say, get me out of my little comfort zone. Say, I want to I wanna see the invisible. I want to hear the inaudible. I want to do the impossible. So stretch me. Oh, come on. You're in the right place. Oh, yeah. Listen to me. Hear me carefully. This is so important to you. Everything. Say everything. Every breakthrough. Every deliverance. Every healing, every salvation, everything happens because somebody dared to believe. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe. Say believe. I say it this way. Believe and you shall receive. Doubt and do without. How many believers I got in the house? How many believe in God for more? How many believe in God for greater? How many believe in God for above? Listen to me. There are people who are by nature pessimistic. So you got to work harder because you, you always see the cup half empty rather than half full. But I want to tell you, you'll never experience another miracle in your life without faith. You'll never experience another breakthrough without faith. You got to, you got to recognize that negativity Doubt and unbelief and always complaining is of the devil. You got to see it for what it, somebody said. Let me just tell you, let me tell you, if you, you got, you, some people will always tell you why it can't happen, why you can't do this, why this will never happen. I want to tell you, you got to tell the, listen to, they're not the devil, but I want to tell you, it is of the devil. I want you to, doubt and unbelief is of the devil. And you got people who always tell you why you can't be what God called you to be. But look at somebody and say, I can do all things. All things through Christ who gives me strength. Yes, you can. I say, yes, you can. I say, yes, you can. Sound familiar? Say, yes, you can. Faith enables me. Listen to me. Goals causes me to stretch my faith. Goals are statements of faith. I will lose that weight. I will get out of debt. I will read my Bible in a year. I will spend time in prayer. It's a statement of faith. Goals are a statement of faith. I want to tell you, listen to what Jesus said. Matthew 9, 29. According to your faith, be it done unto you. If you can't believe, you can't receive. But I want you to know, if you'll believe it, you can receive it. Can I have an amen? You got to believe. Every breakthrough come as a result of faith. And I want you to know, listen to it, we live in a negative world. We live in a, a, a world that's surrounded. Sometimes we can be in communities that's filled with negativity. And I want to tell you, people will, you, you, you start being positive, you start declaring the word, you start telling people who you are in Christ, you start telling people what God wants to do, and some, I want you, you're going to make some enemies real quick, because they, they, we got people who are surrounded by negativity and doubt and unbelief. I want you to know, listen, when, when we, you, 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 some of you know the story, but when we were, we had prayed for this facility for 10 years, that's a long time. When they finally agreed to sell for 10 years, they told us they would never sell it to us. But how I many you know in God's vocabulary, there's no such thing as never. God said, if you can believe, listen to me, God had already told us he was going to give us his property. Now listen to me. 
after Katrina, when we had opened up this place and provided a shelter for hundreds and hundreds of people from, from the New Orleans area, and after we had fed thousands and thousands of people, God says, you, when you give to the poor, you've lent to the Lord, and God says, I'm going to repay. God says, it's time to repay. Send a letter to the owner and, 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 I, and ask him once again. I said, you know how you felt? God, he didn't told me for 10 years he's not going to sell it to God said, write the letter. We wrote the letter, and he said, okay, I'm willing to sell it, but you got 12 weeks to come up with the money. Now, we had been praying because we had been stretching our faith. We had 400000 but we needed $850,000 as a down payment. By the time I shared it with the congregation, it was right about 11, maybe going on 10 weeks. I had a group of members who got together and said, how are they going to do that? How are they, how they, what are they going to do? How are they going to they gonna make that happen? Could you imagine? That's why I say you better watch people who are full of doubt and unbelief. And they got, to, they got a group together in this church, and they begin to get in cool. Most of them are not even here no more. But they got together and start talking about how it'll never happen. Oh, Pastor Neil leading them astray. And all, listen, all this stuff. And, you know, and listen, I didn't, I didn't ask nobody. I said, listen, God told me one word. He said, if we'll give the fish and loaf, God will do the multiplying. I say, faith is not you having to do it. Faith is believing that God can do it. I didn't have $450,000 to raise in 12 weeks. But how many know God did? And all God asks you to do is believe. Look at somebody say, you just got to believe. But I say that to tell you because, listen to me, there are people here who were saying how it can never happen. It's impossible. You know, you know at, at the time, think of it. It was an impossibility. But God specialized in possibility. Our average income at the time may have been maybe, let's say, let's say our average income was $10,000 a week. That means in, in, in 10 weeks, that would be $100,000. That's at least $350,000 short of our goal. So how in the world are we going to raise up an additional $450,000 $450, or $350,000? But God says, believe me, Neil, I'll do it. And you know what? When we stretched our faith, isn't it amazing how God, listen, when we walked in the bank, with $850,000 cash. Come on. The banker, he couldn't believe it himself. We, we signed the paperwork. Come on. Because listen to me. I'm a, y'all could understand. They don't expect us people to have that kind of money. Say, but God. Say, with God, all things are possible. You got to dare to believe. Now listen to me. You got to see that doubt and unbelief is an enemy. Little goals, little faith. Big goals, big faith. Listen. God became angry at the children of Israel because their constant doubt and unbelief. Listen. I, I want, I, nothing angers God more than small, limited thinking and low living. That fails to take God as his word. You can read it. I'm, a, I'm not going to read it all. But Psalm 78, it talks about how God became angry because they limited the Holy One of Israel. I'm going to read just a, a few verses. In Psalm 78, it says, verse 40, how often they provoked him in the wilderness. They grieved him in the desert. See, you grieve the God who created everything. The God who said, let there be light, and there was light. The God who made everything. Listen, and you dare to believe that God can save your marriage, and God can heal your home, and God can get you out of debt free. He owns all the gold and all the silver. Why he can't get you out of debt? Why he can't turn around? The God who owns everything, why he can't bless you with a job? The God who created everything, why he can't bless you with a husband? The God who made everything, why he can't open doors that no man He can do anything but fail. Can I have an Amen. He just need believers. But they made God angry. He said, they grieve me. 
Yes, again and again, they tempted God and they limited the Holy One of Israel. They did not, listen, here's the key. They did not remember his power the day he redeemed them from the enemy. How many of God did something for you? Just raise your hand. How many of he protected you, he saved you, he healed you, he delivered you, he set, he set you free? Come on, if God did anything for you, if, listen, if, if God has done anything for you, he delivered you from drugs, delivered you from alcohol, he, he, he delivered you from immorality morality. Come on. He saved your mind. He, did, he protected you. He redeemed you from suicide. Anybody God saved you from something. Anybody God healed your body. Come on. He turned you around. He, he, he listened. He saved you just in time. Anybody, anybody you can testify that he brought you out of poverty. He brought you out of lack. He, he did something for you. Come on now. Give him some praise. Don't ever forget what he's done for you. Don't ever forget how he delivered you. Don't ever forget how he saved you. Don't ever forget how he renewed you. Y'all don't understand. Listen to me. The reason why I shout, because listen to me, I, this wasn't in my DNA. You got to understand, God will rewrite your history. He'll rewrite your family. Come on, somebody. That's why I don't let your past determine your future. I don't care what your daddy, your granddad, or your great grand. I want to tell you, if you believe, God said, all things are possible. And I want to tell you, when you get the revelation, and you get the understanding that in God you can be all that he called you to be. Do I have any believers in here? Come on. Do I have anybody who will stretch their faith? Say stretch. Come on. Look at somebody. Say stretch. Come on. I need somebody to stretch. Stretch, come on. We got single parents all over this place who, who, who the world said they would never be able to home on, and today they own their own house. Come on, give God some praise. Give God a shout right now. People who were once on welfare, once on food stamps, but today God has brought them out of poverty and blessed their eyes. Give God a shout. Oh, yes, he can. Don't do what Israel did. They forgot, and they forgot what God did in their lives. Is it one of the greatest sins? Listen, that's why, parents, you got to tell children of the goodness of God. You got to tell them what God did for them. You got to tell, listen, don't just give them the, the benefit. We got parents who want to shower them every day, but you got to tell them what God, how, what God did for you. You got to tell them, listen, the reason why daddy can bless you is because that was a time I couldn't rub two nickels together, but the God of the universe. Oh, let them, t don't forget, don't stop telling them what God has done in your life. He's been so good to us. He's been so good. Listen, the, the problem with Israel and the problem with so many people, I want to tell you one of the problems in so many of our community is because we don't remember what God has done for us. We limit the Holy One of Israel. We, we limit God. We, we, there was so much more that God wanted to do, but you, you, you dare, you didn't, you, you allow fear to control you. You allow doubt to control you. Allow, well, nobody ever did that before. That's all right. Let it, you be the first one. I want to tell you, God showed his power over and again to the children of Israel. Yet when they got in the wilderness, hard times are going to come in your life. But how I many you know that gold is, 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 is refined in fire? All precious metal. So listen to you. When there's fire in your life, it just means that God is refining you like gold. Look at somebody say, I'm coming out like gold. Hardship is for a reason. That's what's wrong. I want to tell you, one of, the, one of the challenges of this younger generation is many of them have never experienced hardship. Do they don't know how to press through anything. So they want to quit at the drop of a dime. They want to quit on their marriage. They want to quit on their job. They want to quit the slightest hardship. You got to not be a quitter. Come on, you got to be a believer. You got to press through. The Bible says, and I want to just say that, I've heard this is not original. I've stole this from somebody. But let the size of your God determine the size of your goal. Some of you let the, your circumstance determine what you believe for. 
But I want you to know, don't let your circumstances, your surroundings determine what you believe. Let the size of your God. Because I want you to know, this is what he says, Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able. Say he's able. able. Come on, look at somebody and say, he's able. able. Listen, to do exceedingly. Say exceedingly. Exceedingly. Say abundantly. Abundantly. Above Above. all. All. Say all all that we could ask or even think. According to the power that works in us. I want you to know that there's nothing that God can't do but fail. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly. Let me just tell you why you need to stretch your faith and set goals. Because sometimes you're going to help somebody else. I'm going to give you an example. Some of, some of you can understand it. Listen, we, we have a, a pastor's coalition here in St. John. It was only about... Usually on an average, about four or five, maybe sometimes six or seven of us gather together because we know that there's power in unity. The Bible says how good it is when brothers dwell together in unity. Well, one time in our time of prayer, it was one of them brought up, wouldn't it be nice if we together as a group of pastors uh, blessed our community and, and, and gave and served them a meal and gave away turkeys? I said, that would be awesome. Well, you know, we, we, I looked around the room. I said, well, listen, I think, we, I think we can get so many pastors on board. And, and, uh, and we started sharing. And before you know it, we set a goal. We said, listen, let's believe God we can feed 2,000 people. Let's believe God that we can give away 1,000 turkeys. Now, how many of talk is cheap? Because I found out that some people, when it comes to when it, when it comes to, to believing for it, it's easy to talk it. But believing for it is another thing. Because when we start putting the numbers together, and we start writing out what it's going to cost, we said, you know, the, we, had, we came up with a budget. It was about 18,000, 19,000 to, 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 to do that. But how, what is that among 23 churches? But here's the tragedy of it, is that, you know, the sad thing is, is that some people, you know, we, we, we came together, we said, we had church, said, well, I, I believe we can do this, and I believe we can do that. Imagine, some church, they could not believe God for $200. And I said, oh, God, but now listen to me, this is why I'm not condemning, because you see, you can only sometimes believe what you see. Some people, they're limited, they've never seen faith stretch. You know what? And I realized right then, we're going to have to believe for a whole lot of these pastors. We're going to have to stretch our faith. So we determined right then, you know what? So one pastor had the nerves in the meeting said, well, pastor, well, what if we don't come up with the, all the money? Uh, what, what you going to do? I said, we'll cover it. I said, God, the God, our God will provide it. I, I said, How many know? See, that's what faith says. Do y'all realize that, listen, we didn't even have to take extra money out of the budget. You, do you understand it? Because when you stretch your faith, isn't it amazing how what God do? But listen what has happened. This is why you need to stretch your faith. Because when all those folks showed up and they saw we started giving out those down turks, then Pastor said, man, we did it. Man, it really did happen. And they, they, now they say, Pastor, we can, I, I can see it now. We, it's going to be bigger than next year. We're going to do this. I say, well, come on. They're getting on board. See, some people need to see your faith. Some people need to see that you can believe God for. They've never been in that way. But sometimes they need to see that you can believe God for something. You can believe God. And when they watch your faith, oh, I, you did it. I believe I can do it too. And sometimes we can be helpers of others' faith if you're dare to believe. How many of you willing to stretch your faith? That's why I want you to stretch so that other people can look at you and say, you might have been the first one to finish college in your family. You might have been the first to own a home. But now because you did it, faith has risen in the earth. Well, if you did it, come on, I believe that God can do it in my life. And so we want to help stretch people's faith. And what, what goals does is stretches our faith. I want, it to, I want to stretch. How many of you want to stretch to see God do exceedingly, abundantly. You know, I'm believing God for some things, but how many, how many want God to just blow your mind? That, that's what Ephesians 3.20 says. God said, I can do, I can blow your mind, Neil. 
I can do above what you can think, above what you can even imagine. How many of you want God to do above what you can think or imagine? Then I want you to do strength. See, when you purpose in your heart, so listen, I'm not talking about positive thinking. I know listen, there's a principle in positive thinking, but I'm talking about doing what only God can do. If you can do it, you don't need God. A lot of people do with their own, own ability, and that's fine. But when you do what only God can do, God gets the glory. How many don't give God some glory? Then if we want to bring God some glory in our lives, then we're going to have to stretch our faith. And lastly, as I close, goals enable us to endure the crosses of life. Must I bear this cross alone while all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me. You can't go through life without experiencing disappointment, difficulties, tragedies. It's just part of the life. But what goals enable me to do, it enables me to endure the crosses of life. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 too, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher, the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. You know what enabled Jesus to go through the cross? You know what enabled Jesus to endure the cruelty of man, the, the, the thing that you and I could never even imagine, to suffer, to, to bleed, to die? You know what enabled him? Because he saw you and I. He saw you and I one day serving. He saw your redemption. He saw you and I being saved. He said, I can endure it for him. I can endure it for you. I'll endure it for you. And because of the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of glory. Jesus was able to endure the cruelty of the cross because he had a goal in mind, and that was your, you and me, our being redeemed. He wanted to bring many sons and daughters to glory. Come on, thank God for our Savior right now. Come on. Thank God for Jesus. Come on, for what he did for your life. He loved you so much. He saved you. Come on, he went through the cross for you. Oh, yes, he did it for you. And goals enable me endure the sacrifices because when we can see the prize. For example, if you want to be debt free, how many of you know it's going to cost you something? I'm grateful to say my wife and I are debt free. Oh, yeah, give God some prayer. No, no, listen, listen. Don't be a hater. I, I'm just trying to help you. I'm just, celebrate. Celebrate others. Cel don't, don't, don't. Listen to me. I, I, everything I have, I'll share with you every, how God blessed my life. Listen, one of my goals this year, I've been driving the same vehicle for 16 years. One of the goals was to get a, a, a SUV. I had a, one in mind, but I only wanted to pay so much for it. I, I wanted to pay half of what it was, what it cost. I know y'all think that's impossible, but not with my God. I, I'm just telling y'all, you, you, that was my desire. I said, okay, God, I want it. But to, I say it's ridiculous how much they cost. God, I got to pay half of what that is. How many of God did it? Oh, yes. I've learned, listen to me. It's just a two. I don't, listen to me. I, I, I want you, material things is not what I live for. God blesses, it's just two. If I can't ride nobody in it, I might as well give it away. But everything God gives us is a two to be used for his glory. But how many of you know, you're going to have to endure some things. If you, if you, if you, it, 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 you know, Dave Ramsey said this way, live like no one else so later you can live like no one else. How many of you heard that before? Many people want the joy of being debt free but unwilling to endure the cross of denying yourself. My wife and I can relate and tell you clearly there was a time we didn't have. We had more month than money. Not just a time, several years. But we had a goal in mind. We're going to get out of debt. We're going to sacrifice. We didn't even go to McDonald's. I know you say that's, that's ridiculous. 
But I'm just letting you know that we, we had a goal in mind. We said, listen, we're not going to forever be a slave to the lender. I'm tired of NSF checks. And I set a goal. I said, God, by your grace, if you'll help me, Lord God, listen to me. And I didn't rob God to get there either. And we honored God. And it's been amazing how God has blessed. But I want you to know, there's a cross. It's the same way with living in health. If you're going to have good health, how many of you are going to have to experience the cross of denying your appetite? Don't wait till you're given a diagnosis to change your eating habits. We're going to be talking about that in the upcoming month, how to, how to set physical goals. But you, you have to endure. Listen, football players endure the rigors of training, working out, because they got their eyes on the prize. Goals will cost you something. Don't just survive, determine you're going to thrive. Listen to what it said of Job. I'm, I'm, this is the last, one of the last scriptures I read. But I don't have strength to endure. I have nothing to live for. Job 6, 11. Listen, when we lose sight of goals, we don't have strength to endure. You know, they did a study of all the people who endured the Holocaust. Un unbelievable cruelty. How, you, I, I, I love history. I watched so many of the World War II uh, uh, documentaries. And it, it was just unbelievable the injustices and the cruelty how one human being can inflict on another. I just can't imagine. What enabled some people to endure and some people to, to faint by the wayside? The people, they did a study of all the people who endured the Holocaust. This is the one thing they had in common. They all had a goal. They all saw. They lived for, they had a purpose to live for. They had a reason to endure. See, when you don't have a reason for life, you give up on life. When you lose sight of a goal, you give up. That's what happens. Sometimes you, you see when people experience a lost loved one, sometimes they lose the will to live. Nothing was wrong with them. They just died. Like Job, I don't have strength to endure if I have nothing to live for. Goals give us a purpose, a meaning to live for. I believe as long as we have breath, we have purpose. I believe as long as we live in this earth suit, we got a reason to live, and we need to ever be pressing. Anybody saw the movie Cast Away with Tom Hanks? You ever know what enabled him to, to, to persevere? And to, he had a goal. He kept the picture of, 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 I don't know, was he mad at the time or was it his girl, his girlfriend? But he had a picture. I want to one day get to be re reunited with my. See, that that will press you, that will cause you to press through. 2018 was a challenging year for many people. Some experience sick, sickness, some experience death, some had strokes. And I want to tell you, some people come to the end of a year limping. But you got to do what Paul says. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forget what is behind and straining toward what's ahead. I press. Look at somebody and say, you got to press. Come on, look at somebody and say, you got to press. And this morning while we were in prayer, the Lord showed some of you have had a difficult year. God is not here to beat up on you, condemn you, but he wants to encourage you. to. He wants to let you know that you might have had a difficult year but that, that that's, does not define your future. God has a better future for you. And some of you face some challenges, and some of you have gone through some things, but I want you to know that if you can dare to believe, the best is yet to come. Oh, come on, give God. I believe the best. Listen to me. Some of may have gone through a divorce, and, you know, we had people, they were believing for their marriage, but it ended in divorce anyway. They, they were holding on to a dream, but it didn't happen. I want you to know, don't, don't, don't let your failure define who you are. Listen to Failure might happen to you, but how many know God still has a purpose for your life? It may have didn't work out like you thought it would. But I've learned that if you'll keep your eye on Jesus, 
He said, all things, say all things, is working together for the good to those who love God and call the call to the good. How many of you love God in here this morning? Listen, now listen to me. I want to do this. I want to do this. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, you know what? This was a year of setbacks. This was a year of disappointment. I had some heartache. It was a year of loss. You may have come in here, man, I, listen, I needed to be encouraged today. I want you to know that today God wants you to know. I don't care what your past was. It might have been, man, this was the worst year of our marriage. I don't even know. You come, up, you come to the end of the year and you just limping. But I want you to know that, listen, God wants you to know that he who began a good work, he going to finish it. If that's you today, and you're saying today, I know that's others. You say, man, this was a, a, a difficult year for me. And I know, and that word was for you in any way. Just stand on your feet right where you are. Just stand all over this place. Just stand all over this place. Just stand on your feet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want some of my altar workers to come. Just come. I know some of you altar workers, you, you're standing for prayer. But if you, if you, listen, if this was a challenging year for me, would you just come? Would you just, just come to the altar right here? Listen to me. What we're going to do, we're going to listen to, we're not going to bring our disappointments into the new year. Just come up right now. All of you that's here, come on. Just, just come, just come to this altar. We're going to just, we're going to have a time of prayer and we're going to do what the Bible says. If we gonna, if if that for you, come on, just come, just come, just come, just come, just come, just come to the front, just come to the front. Make your way to the front. Make your way, make your way. Come, come close up. We're gonna have a time where we wanna pray for you. Oh yes, I know. Listen to me. It, it, would would y'all just come forward? Just just come forward. Just come forward. Just come forward. Thank you. Thank you. I'm confident of this. Listen. Sometimes God will take your worst year and He'll turn it around. And make it your best year. Oh, yes, he will. He'll take every setback as a setup for a comeback. Come on, say it with me. Say, my setback was just a setup for a comeback. Say, 2019 is going to be my year. Oh, yes, it will. I want to pray for you. Oh, yes, it will. You might have experienced a setback. I want you to know, when you live long enough, those you can know, once you live long enough, you're going to experience setbacks in life. You experience hurts in life. You're going to experience disappointment. It's just part of life. But I want you to know, it don't have to define you. It's just part of the journey. Oh, I, I, just, I just have faith that today, listen, I'm just telling you, God wants you to know that he's going to do something. I'm going to pray a general prayer, and then we're going to just, we're going to pray over you. Just, just, I want to just pray for you, because some of you came in here, and, and you said, you know what, I, that, that, I didn't reach that goal. I was disappointed. I was discouraged. I experienced failure. I, 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 I lost a loved one. It, it, it still hurts. It still hurts. I want to pray for you. Those of you that's in the, in the congregation, would you stretch your hand toward these? Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the God of all comfort. And God, you promised that you would comfort us, that you would heal us. That you will restore us. That you will renew us. That you would revive us. Lord, you're able to take every disappointment, every loss, every hurt, every failure. Lord, Lord God, sometimes we, we have a hard time just forgiving ourselves for the sometimes the stupid things we've done. So God, God, give us the grace to forgive ourselves that we won't just keep kicking ourselves. We won't allow guilt, shame, discouragement. But God, today, today, Lord, we come to an altar and we let the, we let the devil know we're leaving it at the altar. We're leaving every hurt, every disappointment, every discouragement. God, we dare to believe you for a better day. We dare to believe you that, God, that you're according to your word, that all things are working together for my good and your glory because I love you. And God, that weeping might endure for a night. 
but joy. Say joy. But joy is coming in the morning. God, right now, I'm asking all over this place, God. Wherever they experience hurt, come on, God, fill the void. Heal the hurt. Fill the emptiness, God. Comfort them, God. Remind them, Lord God, that we walk through valleys, but you are with us. God, today, walk with them. Today, God, comfort them. Strengthen them. Strengthen them. And so, God, I just pray. I'm going to ask you, just join hands with somebody because, you know, I believe that's power in praying one for another. Would you join hands? And I want you to know, you hear, but you pray. This is the way healing flows. This is the way everything. Whereas you pray for that person next to you, God's going to, would you make happen for others? God's going to make happen for you. I want you to pray for that person next to you. And you pray for the person next. And as you pray for them, don't just pray for yourself. Pray for somebody next to you. And as you pray for them, God's going to make, God's going to do something in your life. Father, all over this place, as we stand in agreement, we pray for that person on my right. We pray for that person on our left. God, we pray for, God, you would heal them. We pray that you would comfort them. We pray that, God, you would do a work in their hearts today. God, we're asking you right now, let them, let them, lift them up, Lord God. Encourage them like now, God. Let them know, Lord God, that you're the lifter of our head. Lift every bow down head. Strengthen every weak need, God. Encourage today, Lord God, by your spirit all over this place, God. Do it right now. Come on, all over this place. Come on, I, I see healing right now. Come on, God's doing it right now. Touch today, God. Come on, God. I pray there is a brighter day. There is a better day coming. Come on, by your spirit right now. By your spirit all over this room, Lord. Now, Lord, I'm asking let, let healing flow. Moved by your spirit. Let faith rise in their hearts. Faith to see the invisible. Faith to hear the inaudible. Faith to do the impossible. God, I pray that we are believers. We're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be like the children of Israel that doubted you, that limited you, that Lord, we we forgot when we were in the wilderness, when we went through the hard time, we forgot your goodness. But God, the same God who saved us, the same God who brought us out, the same God who delivered us, the same God who healed, God is the same God who will bring us through. So God, we thank you for what you're gonna do. Now, God, even right now, I pray all over this room, let deliverance flow. Delivered by your spirit. Healed today. By your spirit, God. Do what only you can do. In the name of Jesus. I just sense this for all. Listen, I, I can prophesy to all. But I'm just telling you. By the word of the Lord. The Lord is let me, telling me to let you know. Listen to me. You know. There's a, there's a, a psalm says. That when God brought him through the bondage, they say that, that we were like children that laugh. That God can bring us out of a sub something so that when we look back at it, we can't we is we can just got joy because we oh, it's hard to believe that that's what God brought us out of. And I want you to know that sometimes don't let your disappointment, your failure, your your loss define you. God says, I'm able to take what the enemy with circumstances, sometimes even our mistake, I'm able to take all of that and turn it around and work it for your good and he's gonna do it now if you believe that give him some praise all over this place come on you believe it you believe it he's gonna do 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 it in your life he's gonna do it in your life he's gonna do it in your life oh yeah come on yes 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 come on yes yes come on now just say this with me say i decree in 2019, that I will fulfill the purposes of God. I will do that all that He called me to do. I'm going to see all that He wants me to see. I'm going to hear all that He wants me to hear. And I'm going to accomplish all that He wants me to accomplish. Because it's not by might, nor by my power. But by his spirit, say the Lord. So I give you the praise, Lord. Because you're a good God. Come on, give him some praise. Oh, give him some praise. Oh, give him some praise.
some of you that may have come in here and you may have strayed away from the Lord and today you can't you find yourself in the house of the Lord this last Sunday some of you 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 backslid I just want to just just between you know and some of you may have came and say you know I never really totally surrendered to Jesus